Hi folks, uh, this is Postgres Hacking 101 on Byte Relay and today we are talking about, uh, continuing to talk about Buffer Manager and uh, today's topic is uh, dropping shared buffers caches. As you know, uh, data is uh, divided into chunks which we called blocks or pages uh, and it is fitted into main memory in so-called shared buffers. So shared buffers contain a cache of your tables and indexes and uh, some other stuff uh, in the main memory. So we have a Postgres source code uh, with the most recent commit by Andres Freund. Uh, let's start checking and uh, let's start configuring and compiling it and let's try to implement a function uh, drop all caches uh, here we see a file buffer manager and it declares that it have a very simple API read buffer effectively making so-called pin so preventing uh, it uh, its flush out and uh, ensuring that this uh, buffer for this page exists in main memory. Releasing buffer, which is effectively unpin, and marking it dirty. Super simple API, but things are much more difficult when you dive in. The problem is implementation is uh, like very concurrent. What does it mean? That means that there is not just a pin, share lock and exclusive lock on a page contents but there are as many 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 other locks uh, first of all uh, when you are trying to read some um, page from the disk first you want to check is it in cache is it in shared buffers uh, you compose so-called uh, buffer tag buffer tag uh, This is buffer tag, which is which contains a namespace ID, database ID, for relation ID, and uh, number of this uh, block within a uh, relation file. And you want to look up if it's in cache, and you lock partition of uh, of uh, hash table that maps uh, buffer tag into actual buffer. When you find actual buffer, you lock buffer header uh, and check if there is actually the, the still that uh, that uh, block that you want in this buffer. And finally, you have to lock buffer contents to make sure that uh, buffer contents to make sure that it's not in a process of reading or writing or something like that. Okay. So we want to implement a uh, drop of caches. Let's see here we have a very similar, um, very interesting uh, function, which is called invalidate buffer. Essentially, we want to do invalidation with all the, uh, with any um, buffer, but we want to first flush it. Let's see where invalidation is used. Invalidation is used in uh, functions like drop relation buffers. When this function is called, when we uh, drop in relation, we need to scan through all uh, shared buffers. Here is that scan. Uh, and buffers is the size of relation buffers. We find, uh, we check each buffer, if it's a buffer of that relation that we are going to drop, uh, we invalidate it. Mm, looks good, but we do not want to just throw the contents away. We want to save it on disk and then empty up a space for something else. So we need not uh, drop in relation buffers, but rather flush in relation buffers and then invalidating the relation buffer. And we see there is a function flush buffer which seems like see it, see it how it needs. Let's see where it's called. Flush relations all buffers. 
uh, it, it's doing almost that what we want. It's uh, flushing uh, contents of specific relation. But we want to flush everything everything just everything there must be a function like flush that uh, database or something like that flush the base buffers yeah that's it let's copy it uh, without a comment because comments will lie if we just copy paste it and let's make a function flush all buffers uh, without uh, without an argument and without a filter uh, and without a filter just flush uh, and then we need to do two things pin it again and lock header again uh, unpin lock header and then invalidate date buffer and if the page is not dirty we can just invalidate it i think so should work but now we see that uh, we are uh, we will proceed even for peanut buffers that's wrong we, we cannot evict peanut buffers so let's uh, filter out uh, pins pin it buffer let's see how we can how can we understand that the buffer is pinned remember let's see how it how the pin is done here we do pin buffer and the pin will make a ref count plus plus uh, and on pin will decrement reference counter and then we need to understand if if uh, If uh, if it's pinned, it. it seems quite difficult. Okay, let's use this function. Flush all buffers. Maybe we can uh, look what is what checkpoint is doing. Or okay, let's wait for for each buffer to be unpinned and leave it just as it is. Uh, now we need to provide catalog function uh, to invoke this flush all buffers. Uh, first of all, we need to, to make a um, declaration of this function. Extend void flush buffers. Void. And uh, I'm doing it in the wrong place, actually. This temp installation is a wrong place. This is the correct place. Yes. And also I want to reuse prototype of so-called pg reload conf. This is a function in system catalog that's used to uh, re-read your um, configuration files if you change something there. For example, use alter system uh, functions. Here it is. PG 
drop, not drop, flush shared buffers. And here we will do flush all buffers. Uh, but we need to include proper header file, move manager h, it must be in sorted order. Okay, now we have this function. We need a copy in a system catalog. Uh, flush all shared buffers. Um, define it in system catalog and we need o OID. I used to find uh, Perl script which which is searching for us unused OIDs. So just a random number. Okay, let's take it. I think that's it. It should work. Let's try it. Probably I've forgotten something. No, no problem. While it compiles, let's revisit our code. Flush all buffers. If it's dirty, then flush invalidate. If it's not dirty, just invalidate. I think it should work. There is so many locks that we need to take in a proper, uh, proper sequence that I'm sure that I messed something up. Okay, compilation finished without warning, that's strange, but let's live with this. I see there is some Postgres running, let's just make it quit. Uh, remove any previous installation. Uh, I removed from file. <laughs> remove previous installation and let's call init db when it will be installed <laughs> from sources <laughs> okay database is initialized database is up and running We created a function which is called uh, flush shared buffers. Now everything will break. No. Okay. Create table x as select y random from generate series one million. Integers as keys, what's wrong? Generate series, and we need an index. Create index on. Did you know that you don't have to like invent a name for your index? It will just create index automatically. If you look. You see there is a, a B3 index with a just made up name. And net now let's try analyze. Uh, uh, no, no, not analyze. Explain. Uh, analyze 
buffers select everything from uh, x where y is 1 3 3 7 3 1 3 3 7 we should visit like four or five blocks in shared buffers oh uh -huh. yes uh, plan planning took more hits now we see that shared hits four we uh, actually uh, have a b3 of haze mm, three and uh, one probably one hip page uh, containing needed tuple uh, if we drop caches everything will break what went wrong and pin buffer is in in incorrect place Let's revisit our code. What's there? And pin buffer. Let's try to just I just do not understand. Let's see uh, assertions that failed in line 1926. 1926, 1926. Ah, we should release content log before doing this. I expected that there be, will be some problems with sequences of logs. And unlockings. Oh, what a mess. Restart. Fetch buffers. Ha! Huh, now we have a. Now we have a deadlock. Now we have a deadlock and everything hand. Q9 Postgres. So this is not an option. Let me think. Okay. After five minutes of messing with logs, I have come up with working sequence. <laughs> so we unpin buffer to, make, to be able to invalidate it in the only after that we can release a content log. And uh, uh, invalidate buffer will unlock buffer header. So four different logs for better concurrency is just difficult to work with, uh, you know. Uh, I've installed it, now it works like that. Uh, you see, here is a shared read and then shared hit. Now we read four pages out of shared buffer. If we repeat, we are hitting shared buffers again and again. But when we drop our caches, we observe... Uh, observe that we have to had to read this uh, data from disk again. Do not ever use this function on your production servers. This is just for hacking only. I hope you enjoyed it, and I will try to make tomorrow uh, next uh, iteration of working with shared buffers. Thank you for watching. Bye.